battling foul weather, Flight 269 begins its final approach to Phuket International Airport in Thailand. Powerful winds force the plane away from the glide path while the co-pilot fights to align the aircraft with the runway, but the plane is descending. Too fast to correct its position rather than risk crashing, the pilots decide to perform a go-around and set up another approach. The landing gear is retracted and flaps are set for the maneuver, but just as the plane begins to climb out of danger, calamity strikes again. The aircraft is rapidly losing speed and altitude, plunging them into an even more precarious situation. Will the pilots manage to execute a safe gore around, or is it already too late to avoid disaster? This is the story of 1-2 Go Flight 269. It's the afternoon of September 16, 2007 and 123 passengers are boarding 112GO Airlines Flight 269 at Don Mueang International Airport in Bangkok. This flight is scheduled to depart at 2.30 p.m. Local time should be a routine. Flight shuttling tourists from Bangkok to Phuket, one of Thailand's most popular tourist destinations, but several factors made this flight anything but ordinary. 112 Go Airlines is a low cost carrier operated by Orient Thai Airlines, while Orient Thai Airlines was a major player in Thailand's aviation market. At the time, 12 appealed primarily to budget conscious travelers and was known for offering affordable flights throughout the region. Those cheap flights, however, came at a cost. And 12 Go was often under scrutiny for its safety practices, training standards, and operational procedures, but the aircraft for that day was a McDonnell Douglas MD-82 that had been in service since 1983 under normal circumstances that would not have been an issue. The MD-82 is known for its durability and reliability, and in 2007 it was a workhorse for many airlines around the world, like the plane the captain on board for Flight 269 was experienced and reliable. The captain, a 57-year-old. Indonesian National had over 16, 00 flight hours with more than 4,300 hours on the MD-82 at 30 years old. The co-pilot had only 1,265 total flight hours, almost all on the MD-82. The co-pilot, a Thai National, was the pilot flying while the captain was the pilot monitoring for this. Flight 2 pilots with such a large difference in experience is quite common in aviation more concerning. In this case, is how little rest the pilots had prior to the flight on September 16th. In the seven days before the flight, both the captain and the co-pilot had exceeded flight time and duty limits without sufficient rest. The co-pilot had exceeded his duty limits in both the 30 days and 7 days before the flight overexertion and not enough rest almost certainly contributed to the difficult conditions during the flight. AS passengers and crew prepare for takeoff from Bangkok. Their destination in Phuket is battered by storms, heavy rains, strong winds and low visibility. Add complexity to the flight so the pilots decide to take on extra fuel in case they are unable to land immediately or forced to divert to another airport after the flight crew completes their final checks ensures the cabin is secure and obtains clearance from air traffic control the plane is ready for push back as the aircraft begins to taxi toward the runway passengers catch glimpses of the airport terminals and other planes unaware that their short journey will soon face significant challenges before the story of flight 269 continues Here's a message from our partner, the paid partner of today's video, is BetterHelp, the world's largest online therapy service founded in 2013. BetterHelp is on a mission to make starting therapy. Easier, better, help is a platform where therapists and our clients can communicate effectively and get the most out of therapy with a large network of credential therapists. BetterHelp makes it easy to find someone who understands your unique needs, whether you prefer phone calls, video chats, or messaging. BetterHelp offers a convenient and personalized approach to therapy if you have a feel that your therapist isn't the right match. You can switch to another one at no extra cost. Your mental health is just as important as your physical well-being, and BetterHelp makes it easy with a 4.5-star rate on Trustpilot. 
you can trust the quality of care you will receive ready to take that next step towards better mental well-being. Visit BetterHelp.com Aircraft Investigation or choose Aircraft Investigation at sign-up to get a special discount on your first month of therapy. Now, let's go back to the video at 2.30 p.m. Only slightly behind schedule flight 269 departs from Don Muang International Airport. The initial phase of the flight is uneventful. As the aircraft climbs to its cruising altitude, the passengers settle in for a short journey. The flight is expected to take only about an hour and 20 minutes cruising at an altitude of 32,000 RTFT along Airway Gulf 458 before beginning its descent into Phuket. As the flight approaches the Phuket area, the flight crew observes on the radar that the already stormy weather is rapidly worsening heavy rain and strong winds intensify, leading to low visibility conditions and making the approach even more challenging at 3.24 p. Um, the Phuket Approach Controller instructs the crew to descend to 8,000 deer have to proceed directly towards a navigational reference point called Anfil and prepare for the ILS approach to runway 27. Phuket International Airport is equipped with an instrument. Landing System, a precision radio navigation system that provides short-range guidance to aircraft during their approach to a runway, especially in poor weather or low visibility. The ILS works via two types of radio signals, the localizer and the glide slope. The localizer helps the pilots or the autopilot keep the aircraft aligned with the runway center line. It indicates whether the plane is too far to the left or right and helps guide it back onto the correct path. The glide slope helps. The pilots control the aircraft's descent angle, making sure it follows the correct slope down to the runway. It indicates whether the plane is too high or too low. On the approach, the ILS at Phuket features a 1-1-4D offset approach to ensure terrain clearance as a result. The system guides the aircraft on a heading slightly misaligned with the runway, requiring pilots to manually align the aircraft with the runway after they make visual contact the airport is also equipped with a wind shear detection system. However, the overcast weather meant it had insufficient solar power to function fully. Not having access to reliable wind shear alerts added to the challenges that the pilots faced just as flight. 269 nears the airport, Orient, Thai Airlines Flight. 2071 has successfully landed at Phuket International Airport. Although the landing was safe, it was far from smooth. The flight crew immediately reports to the controller that they encountered severe wind shear during their final approach. This report told the crew of Flight 269 that the weather conditions around the airport were not just bad, but potentially dangerous for any aircraft, especially without a fully functional wind shear detection system. When the controller on duty asks if the crew received this critical warning, the captain confirms they are aware of the conditions, but he decides to continue with the approach a choice that would ultimately have fatal consequences as the flight continues its descent. The weather conditions deteriorate further. The crew now faces heavy rain, strong crosswinds, and the looming threat of winder in this dangerous phenomenon, sudden changes in wind speed or direction over a short distance. Can severely impact an aircraft's performance and stability during landing at 3.37 p. EM, the controller, informs the crew of surface winds from 24 zero degree at 15 knots. These winds are challenging, but within the operational limits of the aircraft, however, just a minute later the conditions deteriorate further and the wind increases to 30 knots. Despite this, the crew confirms their intention to land. Preparing to land, the captain extends the landing gear and sets the flaps to 40 grader for landing as the plane descends below Siki Isijiuro, FT, the co-pilot, disengages the autopilot to account. For the ILS offset and realign the aircraft with the runway's center line, not being able to rely on autopilot increases the mental load on the co-pilot requiring him to closely monitor altitude airspeed and glide path angle while in an already exhausted and overstressed state, although the co-pilot disengaged the autopilot. He did not disengage the auto throttle, doing so would have allowed him full control. 
over the thrust ensuring precise speed management during landing with the auto throttle still engaged, unexpected thrust changes from that auto throttle system could disrupt the critical final phase of landing by 3139P. M. The winds pick up to 40 knots, posing a serious threat to the aircraft's stability. The co-pilot struggles against strong winds to align the aircraft with the runway, but the plane deviates from the glide path and descends too quickly, losing more than 1,800 ft per minute. Such a significant deviation from the glide path signals that the aircraft was no longer on a stabilized approach and could not make a safe landing, with the aircraft descending at an alarming rate, the co-pilot calls, for a gore around a maneuver in which the landing is aborted and the aircraft climbs away from the runway to reattempt. The landing, the captain agrees, and the pilots retract the landing gear and set the flaps for a go-around in a standard go-around. The flight crew increases engine power to toga thrust, retracts the landing gear, and climbs to a safe altitude while configuring the aircraft for another approach. However, in this moment, the co-pilot does not activate the toga switch which is designed to provide maximum thrust during a go-around allowing the aircraft to climb safely. Instead, he manually pushes the throttles forward to increase power, but the auto throttle system is still engaged and in mode, which is intended to reduce engine power when landing. When the co-pilot lets go of the throttles, the auto throttle system takes over and automatically decreases thrust, causing the plane to lose speed ear rapidly just as it is trying to climb, panicking as the aircraft speed decreases. The co-pilot transfers control of the plane to the captain. This transfer of control during a critical procedure undoubtedly added to the confusion in the cockpit. By the time the captain took control of the aircraft, it was already too late neither. The captain nor the co-pilot knows that it is the auto throttle that is reducing power and causing the aircraft to continue losing. Losing speed, their altitude peaks at around 300 eft before the aircraft begins to drop rapidly the ground proximity. Warning system sounds and the situation is unrecoverable. Seconds later, the aircraft crashes into an embankment north of runway 27. Just moments after attempting to climb away, the impact is devastating. The aircraft breaks into three parts and bursts. Into flames of the 130 people on board 90 are killed instantly, while 40 others suffer varying degrees of injuries. The stormy weather and challenging terrain continue to present challenges hampering the rescue and firefighting efforts, a 4T ditch. Running parallel to runway 27 prevents vehicles from easily accessing the crash site. Although the ditch can be crossed at either end of the runway, none of the rescue vehicles do, so significantly slowing their response times at first only a single. Ambulance arrives, additional fire and rescue teams from the town of Phuket do not arrive until 30 minutes later. So what caused the devastating crash of Flight 269 and who was at fault in the wake of the disaster aircraft accident investigation? Committee of Thailand investigated the circumstances that led up to the events of September 16, 2007. The investigation concluded that a combination of human error, inadequate training, and poor decision-making were the primary factors leading. To the crash, the investigation also found that the failure to properly execute the go-around procedure and the co-pilot's failure to activate the toga switch were critical errors that significantly contributed to the crash. Additionally, the investigation report highlighted significant issues related to crew resource management. It found that there was a breakdown in communication and decision-making between the captain and the co-pilot during the critical moments leading up to the crash. The flight. Crew failed to follow the standard. Operating procedures for a stabilized approach, proper callouts, and handling emergency situations as outlined in the AROL's Flight Operations Manual. The report's findings were not limited to the actions of the crew on the day of Flight 269 crash. The report also found systemic issues within 112GO Airlines and its parent company, Orient Thai Airlines. The investigation uncovered deficiencies in the training and monitoring of flight. 
Crews, particularly regarding fatigue management and adherence to standard operating procedures, but both the captain and co-pilot had exceeded the flight duty time limitations, likely contributing to their impaired performance during the flight. As a result of these findings, the European Union blacklisted 1-2 airlines due to safety concerns the airline along with its parent company. Orient, Thai Airlines eventually ceased operations in 2018, in part due to ongoing regulatory issues and financial difficulties.